What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we'll be discussing one of the most critical aspects of data management, and that is data backups. Data is the lifeblood of any digital environment, and having reliable backups is key to ensuring that data can be restored if something goes wrong. Whether it's accidental deletion, hardware failure, or a cyber attack, the ability to restore important data is essential for businesses and individuals alike. So in this video, we'll cover what data backups are and why they're important, different types of data backups, including including file backups, system backups, and restoring data. And we'll talk about backup locations, such as storage locations like flash drives, external hard drives, SD cards, and we'll also talk about cloud storage solutions. So let's begin with the basics of data backups. So at its core, a data backup is a copy of your data stored separately from the original, allowing you to recover information in cases lost, corrupted, or damaged. And backups, they can be created automatically or manually, depending on the system and needs of the user. And they are essential for protecting your data from loss due to hardware failure, because hard drives can fail unexpectedly, and this can lead to data loss. Also, there's accidental deletion, so sometimes files are deleted by mistake. Yeah, cyber attack. So ransomware and malware can corrupt or encrypt your data, leaving you without access. And then we have natural disasters. So things like floods, fires, or other disasters can damage your physical devices. So without a backup in place, recovering lost data can be expensive or impossible. Now that we understand the importance of data backups, let's move on to the types of backups. When it comes to backups, there are two primary types to understand. We have file backups and system backups. So let's talk about file backups. So a file backup, this is a copy of specific files or folders that are important to you. It allows you to recover individual pieces of data like documents, photos, or project files without restoring the entire system. And there are several approaches to file backups. We have what is called a full backup. So every file in a designated folder or drive is copied regardless of whether it has been changed since the last backup. And this method is the most comprehensive but can take up significant storage space and time. Then we have what is called an incremental backup. And this is when only the files that have changed since the last backup, whether full or incremental, are copied. And this method saves time and storage but requires multiple backup points to fully restore data. Then we have what is called a differential backup. And this is similar to incremental backups but it backs up all files that have changed since the last full backup. It uses more storage than incremental backups, but requires fewer backup points to restore. So for example, if you have critical documents you want to safeguard, you can set up a regular file backup to ensure you always have the most recent versions. Next, let's talk about system backups. So a system backup, on the other hand, this is a complete snapshot of your computer's operating system, settings, install programs, and files. And this type of backup is useful if you want to restore your entire system to a previous state after a major failure or corruption. And the key points about system backups are as follows. So they offer a full system image, and this creates an exact copy of your entire system, allowing you to recover not just files, but also installed programs and system configurations. Then we have what is called a bare metal backup. This type of system backup allows you to restore your entire system from scratch, including the operating system, without the need to reinstall anything manually. So system backups are especially useful in business environments or for personal users who want to avoid the hassle of reinstalling software and reconfiguring their system. All right, now let's talk about the process of restoring data from a backup. So whether you lost an important file or your entire system has failed, the ability to restore from a backup is crucial. And there are different methods of restoring data depending on what type of backup you have. So the first one is called the file restoration. So if you have a file-based backup solution, restoring a file or folder is generally straightforward. Most backup software will allow you to browse your backups and select the file or version that you want to restore. In cloud backup solutions, you can log into your account and find the files you need and restore them to your local device. 
Then we have what is called system restoration. So restoring from a system backup is a bit more complex as it often involves booting the computer into a recovery mode or using a dedicated system restore tool. In the case of a full system image, the backup software will overwrite your current operating system and files with the saved backup, bringing your computer back to the exact state it was in at the time of the backup. And many systems have built in restoration options such as Windows system restore features and this allows you to revert the operating system to a previous configuration without affecting personal files. In either case, regular backups and a clear understanding of your restore options are critical for a smooth recovery in case of a data loss. Now that we've covered the types of backups and how to restore data, let's move on to where you can store your backups. So choosing the right backup location is essential as it determines how accessible, secure, and safe your backups will be. So let's first look at local storage options. And these are physical devices where you can store your backups close at hand. And we have what are called flash drives. So flash drives, these are portable storage devices, often referred to as USB drives or thumb drives. They're small lightweight and easy to use and flash drives are great for small file backups or quick data transfers. However, they have limited storage capacity and are prone to loss or damage, making them better for temporary backups rather than long-term storage. And then we have external hard drives, which are a popular choice for local backups. These devices offer significantly more storage than flash drives, often ranging from 500 gigabytes to several terabytes. And they are ideal for both file and system backups as they can store large amounts of data and entire system images. And one key benefit of external hard drives is their portability, allowing you to store the drive in a safe location away from your primary computer. However, just like any hardware, they are vulnerable to physical damage, theft, or failure over time. And then we have what are called secure digital cards or SD cards, and they are small portable devices commonly used in smartphones, cameras, and some computers. While their storage capacity is smaller compared to external hard drives, they are useful for file backups like photos, videos, or documents. Now, due to their size and ease of use, SD cards are often used for temporary storage or removing data between devices. However, like flash drives, they are also prone to loss and have limited storage capacity. All right, next, let's discuss cloud storage as a backup option. So cloud storage refers to storing your data on remote servers accessed via the internet. This method has grown in popularity due to its accessibility, scalability, and convenience. So here are some of the advantages of cloud storage. The first one is remote access. So cloud storage allows you to access your backups from anywhere in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. And this makes it ideal for users who need constant access to their data. Cloud storage also offers automatic backups. So many cloud providers such as Google Drive, Dropbox, and iCloud offer automated backups. This means you don't have to worry about manually backing up your files. The system does it for you on a regular schedule. Another advantage is scalability. So unlike physical storage options, cloud storage is easily scalable. So if you need more space, you can simply upgrade your plan. And then there's data redundancy. So cloud providers, they typically store your data in multiple locations, which helps protect against data loss due to server failure or disaster. Now, here are some considerations when it comes to cloud storage. The first one is security. So while cloud providers use encryption to protect your data, there's always a risk of unauthorized access or data breaches. So you want to make sure to choose a reputable provider and use strong passwords and two-factor authentication. The next consideration is cost. So cloud storage often comes with a subscription fee, especially for large amounts of data. While some providers offer free tiers, the space is usually limited. And then there's the need for internet access. So restoring large amounts of data from the cloud can be time consuming if you have slow internet connections. Now that we've covered both local and cloud storage options, let's finish by discussing some best practices for data backups. So the first practice is called the 321 rule. So this rule suggests that you should have three different copies of your data, one primary copy and two backups. And you want to store the backups on two different types of media and keep at least one offsite, such as in the cloud or at a remote location. And this ensures redundancy and protects against data loss from local disasters. Then we 
have automated backups. So you want to set your system of software to perform automatic backups at regular intervals. This reduces the risk of forgetting to manually backup your data. Also, you want to test your backups. So a backup is only useful if it works when you need it. So you want to periodically test your backup and restoration process to ensure that your files can be successfully recovered. Then you want to use encryption. So for sensitive data, you want to use encryption to protect your backups, especially if you're using cloud storage. This ensures that your data is secure, even if the backup media or account is compromised. So to summarize, backups are a vital part of any data protection strategy. Whether you're backing up important files or your entire system, it's essential to understand the types of backups, where to store them, and how to restore your data if disaster strikes. So in this video, we talked about data types such as file backups, system backups, and how to restore your data. And we also talked about storage options such as local options with flash drives, external hard drives, SD cards, and we talked about cloud storage. Now, by following best practices such as the 321 rule, automating backups, and testing your restore processes, you can ensure your data will always be protected. Now, with all of that said, let's do some of this check on learning. So the first question is, which type of backup includes a complete copy of all files on the system? Is it an incremental backup, a differential backup, a system backup, or a file backup? And of course, the correct answer is it is a system backup. So a system backup creates a full copy of the entire system, including the operating system files, applications, and user data. This ensures that the system can be fully restored in case of a failure. File backups, on the other hand, only back up selected files and not the entire system. Next question. Which of the following is not an example of local storage for backups? Would it be a flash drive, an external hard drive, an SD card, or cloud storage? And of course, the answer is cloud storage. So local storage includes physical storage devices like flash drives, external hard drives, and SD cards, which are connected directly to a computer. Cloud storage, this is an online option where data is stored on remote servers and accessed via the internet. So it is not considered local storage. And the final question, what is the primary purpose of restoring data from a backup? Is it to free up storage space? Is it to update software? Is it to recover lost, deleted, or corrupted data? Or is it to remove malware? And of course, the correct answer is it is to recover lost, deleted or corrupted data. So the main purpose of restoring data from a backup is to recover files or systems that have been lost, deleted or corrupted due to hardware failures, software issues or security breaches. Restoring brings the data back to its original state.